Hello guys and welcome to yet another in-depth review here on NNT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler as always and today we'll be checking out a really highly anticipated car for me at least. It is the 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio in the TI Sport trim level. Now before we get started with this video I'd like to specially thank Valenti Alfa Romeo here in Hartford, Connecticut for allowing me to check out the car in today's video. So let's take a brief look at the endo window sticker of this Stelvio, in particular our optional equipment. So we do have the $600 Monte Carlo blue uh, color, which is absolutely amazing. We also do have the sport package, which comes with all these features. And down to here, we have the driver's assistance static package, giving these those two features. We have an 8.8 .8 inch uh, Bluetooth radio with navigation costing us $950 and then we also have our accents and colored um, calipers our destination charge is $995 and we have a total sticker price of $49,690 now as I said earlier this car does come with this beautiful Monte Carlo blue metallic and it is a really really beautiful color again optional but you do have eight other color or seven other color options available with the Stelvio and your wheelbase stands at 111 inches wrapping around to the rear of the 2018 Stelvio the Q4 all-wheel drive system is standard on all models All right, so let's go ahead and start with the exterior features here on the front with the headlamps. Now we can see the daytime running lights are on now, but we do have LED turn signals and projector bi-function headlights used for both your high and low beams. And it's routed throughout that single projector tube. Very aggressive air intakes down there for the TI Sport. Traditional triangular Alfa Romeo nose looking great and we do have a sensor right down there for our adaptive cruise control and all that other good stuff we also do have a couple of circles on the front bumper like that one for our front parking sensors really good looking front end for the 2018 Stelvio in my opinion one of the best looking SUVs out there Pretty nicely designed hood with some little accents right in there on the edges. We also do have some um, paint protecting plastic that runs all the way across the wheel well and down the side or on the back as well. But thanks to the sport package we do have these very nice 20 inch aluminum wheels. They are painted and we have ventilated discs, discs up front. And it looks like four piston calipers too. And these wheels are riding on 255-45 tires. So taking a look over here, we have our nicely styled mirrors with the durable black plastic and the beautiful Monte Carlo blue. And taking a look above those mirrors, we have the nice gloss black going all the way around the windows, even on the B pillars. We also do have that blind spot warning on our mirrors as well. Smarky entry on the front two door handles. We will get into that a little bit later in the video. Back here, same style of wheels, but we do have ventilated disc brakes back here. Nice to see that. Take a look at how beautiful the Alfa Romeo logo is. It's a logo we should be seeing a lot more in the United States. So taking a look back here, we can see our roof rails a little bit better and our shark fin antenna up there. can also see that spoiler with little gloss black extensions. Take a look at how angled the back window is. That's pretty neat. And we do have our third wiper over there. 
full LED tail lamps back here looking awesome. We have our parking sensors going all the way across the rear bumper as well. Nice chrome exhaust outlets and some nice silver trim on the bottom as well. You can also see the backup camera over here. Our Q4 all-wheel drive badging. Alfa Romeo badging is kind of like sticking out of the um, trunk lid there. And our Stelvio badging looking great. So you guys see what I mean when I say this car looks great from every angle. Okay, so our smart key entry system. How this system works is you have to have your key fob within the proximity of the car and you also have to locate these little buttons right here on the door. So the car is open right now, but if you want to lock, all you need to do is press that button. The car will beep and flash the lights twice, letting you know it's locked. But if you want to get back inside the vehicle, all you have to do is put your hand behind the handle and it will unlock for you. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look underneath the hood of the Stelvio. So underneath the hood of this beautiful Stelvio, we do have the base engine. That's all right because it makes some pretty impressive figures for a base engine. Now it is a two liter turbocharged inline four and it gets 280 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 306 pound feet of torque at only 2,000 RPM. You have a nice big strut brace going all the way across the engine there. And we do get to see some metal pulley in, pulleys in there. See our belt. Some battery connections. The air intake is up front. Alright, so checking out the interior, we have three leather color options available. This one is the black leather, of course. Let's go ahead and start on the door panel here. Nicely sporty styled, soft touch materials all the way up here. Down here is the only hard touch you'll find on the, on the door. But you do have nice soft armrests over here. This portion is also soft. You have some really nice aluminum looking inlays and it's got a neat texture to it. Door handles, lock on lock buttons. You do have three person memory which is pretty nice to see. Our window lockout, our regular windows. All four windows are fully automatic. We have a mirror controller right here and it also they also are power folding mirrors. And a trunk releases right over there. So we find a speaker on the door and that is one of eight speakers. A 14-speaker Harman Kardon audio system is also available. So nice little Alfa Romeo sill plates right there. Now to the left of the dash, we have some nice air vents. A couple of um, parking sensors off. Our auto start-stop off is also over here. Our lights and fog lights are right here. And then our gauge dimmer is right over there. A storage pocket that we could put our change in, nicely felt lined. All right, so take a look at these pedals. Pretty nicely uh, accented with rubber and the nice metal there. Big tad pedal, and you also have your um, hood release. Buttons down there for our carpeted floor mats, and we also do have 10-way powered seats. So four-way lumbar, and then these two buttons right here actually control our lumbar or um, our bolsters right here. So if you're more of a skinny person you want to move those inwards or if you're more of a bigger person you move them outwards. We can also adjust this um, thigh extension right here. There's a little lever right there and it'll come right out for you. Now let's get out of the heat and check out the interior here.
So I have the key fob that we get for the Stelvio. It's a really nice key fob. It's got a little bit of a weight to it as well. I have some nice metal accents on the outside of it too. We have a bunch of buttons that we can go ahead and play around with. So we have unlock, lock, trunk release, or remote start. We also have a panic alarm and it has a nice little Alfa Romeo embroidery on the bottom. So all we need to do to start this Stelvio is put our foot on the brake and hit the steering wheel mounted start stop button. All right, so starting here on our beautiful flat bottom leather wrapped sports steering wheel. What a good looking steering wheel. I mean, just take a look at it. And you know what? It's such so nice to be back in an Alfa Romeo. If you haven't if you haven't seen our video of the Quadrifoglio uh, Giulia, please go ahead and check the channel. That car is amazing as well. But let's go ahead and get back to the steering wheel here. So again, really nicely leather wraps, got some stitching on the inside, grip holsters right here. Kind of a neat material right there as well where you're going to rest your thumb. So as far as functions on the steering wheel, over here we have all of our cruise control right over here. It is not an adaptive cruise control like I said earlier, so just a standard manual cruise control. We do have a hill descent mode right here though, which is pretty nice, which will kind of gear the car up to get you down the hill slowly without touching the brake too much. Engine start stop button is right over here. I don't know if you saw me earlier kind of looking over here for the engine stop start stop button. But pretty neat place. Alfa Romeo always does that. Uh, nice to see that. So um, Bluetooth controls right over here. Voice commands our volume up and down for the radio. We also have a skip between our different radio tracks and stuff like that. So pretty neat there. The steering wheel itself is tilt and telescoping. There's a little lever right here you got to release before you do that. But take a look at these nice steer, uh, the these nice um, column column mounted um, shift pedals. So nice and big. They don't move with the steering wheel, so they're stationary, mounted to the column right there. Over here we have our turn signals, and we also have our brights. And over here we have our front and rear wipers. So now, taking a look up here at our gauges, a bunch of different stuff that we can go through up here. So taking a look up here at our gauges, really nicely styled, you have the um, nice flat black with the white lettering, it really pops out nicely. But we do have a bunch of information on the middle screen right here that we can control using the end of the stalk right there, end of the wiper stalk. So pressing that in, kind of scrolls through your menus. Have miles per gallon and all that good stuff. So that's pretty much it. Um, miles per gallon rating down there is is pretty useful as well. But if your tire pressure is low or whatever happens, it'll definitely pop up and tell you that. So we have our engine temperature right over here next to our rev counter. Nice little Alfa Romeo insignia right there. But over here we also do have our speedometer and our fuel gauge. Nice upper dash, it's got a little bit of a strange texturing to it, but nice and soft touch nonetheless. But down here we do have our optional 8.8 .8 inch navigation screen. So we kind of control this screen through this rotary dial down here. I know there's three, but this is the one that we're going to use. And it's pretty similar to BMW's iDrive setup. So we have radio, select it, press down. We have, that's our radio screen right over there. Bump it over. We do have, go back to our home screen. We have our media right here. 
phone screen. This will be a lot more filled up with contacts and all kinds of information if we had our phone paired via the Bluetooth. We also have our navigation. Nice um, wide map here, which is really neat. We can input our destination and all that good stuff. Car settings. So we have our different tire pressures there, our maintenance reminders, and our oil level. Our efficient driving um, categories right here. Again, this will this will fill up um, once you start driving the car. It's only got 80 miles on it, so an owner's manual and a just a basic compass. Pretty neat to see that. Now we do have all of our presets down here, so if you bump the wheel down like so, you'll get all your presets. And going back on a menu, you just bump it over like that. Now if you're inputting a destination, you can also draw letters on here, which is pretty awesome. So if you wanted to spell out um, Libert Road, like where we are now, you just draw an L, and uh, it'll show up as an L up on the screen there. So a couple of nicely styled air vents in the middle, we have our hazards button right there. Dual zone climate control, so we have our temperatures right over here to either side. Very easy to use, um, I knew exactly what I was doing as soon as I got in the car. Fan speeds right here on a nice knob, and our different zones, front and rear defrost, heated steering wheel, don't think we'll be using that today, and three stage heated seats for both the driver and passenger. Again, I don't think we'll be using those today pretty warm out today. So uh, we have a couple connections down here, USB and a 12 volt power outlet. We have a cover over here for our cup holders. Nice deep cup holders too. Going quite a ways. Again more of that nicely styled aluminum trim over here. So here's our gear selector for our 8 speed automatic transmission. We're in park at the moment, but if we wanted to go into reverse, all we have to do is put our foot on the brake, and there's a little unlock lever on the back right here. Press that in, and put the shifter directly upwards. Our parking sensors will show up right over here, and our backup camera shows up right over there. And as you see, the guidance lines move to, a proje to a project your path. If you want to drive, we just pull it all the way down. We also do have a manual mode, which we could start using those paddle shifters. Let's go ahead and put it on into park by just pressing the button right up there. And we're all set. So coming down here, we do have three driving no modes. So we have the A for advanced efficiency. And it'll kind of show up right over there. We have N for normal mode. And we also have for dynamic so that kind of quickens up all kinds of the throttle response and all that good stuff to get you ready for the spirited driving so over here we have our on and off for the um, radio there if you twist this back and forth this is also your audio volume so they didn't skip out on the uh, the volume knob so that's pretty cool to see Electronic parking brake right over here to engage it. All you have to do is lift up on the um, little pedal right there. And to disengage, just press down. But make sure your foot's on the brake while you're doing that. So nice lid over here for our uh, storage console. You have a little bit of room to store all your goods in there and stuff in there. And there's a little vent down there, I'm not sure if you could see it, but it's blowing uh, cooled air from the air conditioning to keep whatever you need in there cool. So that's pretty neat. We also have a little tray in there that you can remove. And we have a couple of connections in there as well. So auto dimming rear view mirror right there, pretty nice to see. It's 
some nice gloss black up here with all of our lighting controls and whatnot. So we have individual lights that we can turn on. They are LED lights and they kind of just fade on and off. We have some more lighting controls. Turn on all your lights right here. Got a big central one. And whether you want the lights to come on when you open the door or not. So we have our visor up here, has our 1, 2, 3 for our garage door home links. And it also has a mirror with a light. Now just taking a look up here, I have tons of headroom. I'd say more than 6 inches. Also another thing I'd like to point out, the windshield is huge. So you have definitely an awesome visibility out there. We also have grab handles over here. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the back seat. First I'm going to put my driver's seat up a little bit for a normal driving position for me because it's kind of far back just to give you guys a good pan of the interior. So now let's go ahead and check them out. So no lack of quality back here on the rear doors. Same soft touch materials you get on the front doors. We have a lock over here. It looks like a couple of speakers even on the door. The nice door handle and the metal or the uh, aluminum styled inlays right there. Nice soft um, elbow rests there and a little bit of storage down there too. You also do get a nice little soap plate there. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in and see how much room we have back here. Very nice seating position back here. You're not too upright and you're not too much reclined, so that's pretty nice with them there. You can also see a bunch of stitching from this front seat, which is nice. Beautiful interior, very sport oriented, definitely. We do have a map pocket back here, a couple of air vents which is very muchly appreciated on days like today, and a couple of USB inlets for the back passenger. Pretty good drivetrain hump so the center passenger is going to have to straddle that. Not a big deal because you don't usually go around carrying five people loaded up to the max with this car. Nice seats back here though, you have some pretty cool patterns for the perforations and the stitching. You have an armrest with a couple of cup holders. And the seats fold 40, 20, 40, so they fold in three different places. Up here we have a couple of LED lights. Grab handle, coat book, go hook, all that good stuff. Now let's go ahead and check out the front passenger space. Front passenger door is much like the driver's as far as your design goes. Also, the front passenger does get the same power adjustments and manual adjustments as the driver does. So you can tighten and loosen your bolsters right here, you can extend the thigh extender, and you also do have four-way lumbar. Pretty rare to see that in a car of this category. So our glove box has a pretty decent amount of room. It fits all your manuals and everything, but it's very nicely felt lined in there. You even have a metal release there, which is pretty neat. Now let's go ahead and see what lies underneath the lid of the trunk.
So you can open the trunk a few different ways, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna go ahead and use the button right next to the backup camera. It's gonna beep at you a few times just to tell you to get out of the way. But take a look at how much room we have back here. That is plenty of room for me at least. And you could also fold down those rear seats like I told you earlier. We do even have um, those little flaps right there where you can do that from back here. Nice cargo shade that kind of hooks in right over there. And a couple of LED lights on either side. And a 12 volt power outlet. What more could you need in a trunk? We do have our carpeted floor mats right over here. And lifting up our lid right there, we have some more storage. Cargo tie downs. We even have a cargo cover covering the window right over there, which is pretty neat. So, opening the lid to our 16.9 gallon fuel tank. Our fuel economy stands at 22 in the city and 28 on the highway, which is pretty, pretty darn good if you ask me. Especially when you're getting 100, or 280 horsepower rather, and all wheel drive. So to wrap up this video, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching, as always. And make sure you catch us next time for our next video.